Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us at this special Intergeo Digital 2020. My name is Jimenez Wang, and I'm currently in charge of location-based solution development. By this chance, on behalf of SatLab, I want to extend you our warmest greetings online. My topic today is about how indoor positioning could make a difference in smart city IoT industry. I will start from the trend which is very impressive in the past year on this technology, showing how we have acknowledged about UWB, and then a brief introduction of how UWB indoor positioning works, as well as comparison between other different technologies that are engaged indoors. At last, based on some typical application, we can imagine together what could be achieved with it in the near future. Smart city is now requiring all the information of everything, as the IoT, Internet of Things, is transforming into IOE, Internet of Everything. At the same time, the concept of the digital twin has greatly enriched the implication of smart cities. Perhaps in the past, when we talk about smart cities, what we can think of is mostly just sensor integration, big data analysis, etc. But now, the virtual world of the digital twin has gradually shown its great potential. Among all the compositions, there is no doubt that RTLS the real-time location system and the LBS location-based service are the indispensable building blocks in both smart cities and digital twins. And they are evolving to be more real-time and more accurate as technology improves. For indoor environments that are not covered by GNSS, this aspect of technology application has become a key focus of this industry development. If you know a little bit about the indoor positioning subject, you can easily name some of the technologies that are used today, such as ultrasound, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, RFID, infrared, and of course, today's main topic, UWB. The reason we choose UWB as a focus of this discussion is because this particular technology has actually attracted enough attention recently. Apple, Samsung, NSP, and ST are the electronics industry leaders that have introduced or deployed UWB technology in the past year. The iPhone 11 Pro and its later model type have already and will integrate the UWB U1 chip inside, as well as the iWatch 6 and AirTag. The ASB has released its secure UWB chip, and Samsung just set the chip inside its newest Galaxy Note 20 Ultra. As to ST, it has just acquired a French UWB chip company called Bespoon to expand its portfolio. So, Public interest in this technology, which previously only seen in industrial solutions, has risen to a very high level as it connects with consumer electronics, the smartphones. So why UWB is so popular nowadays? What can we get out of it? Let's look at UWB from a technical perspective. Ultra-wideband, as known as UWB, is actually not a new technology. It was approved for civilian use by FCC in the early 21st century with a frequency range of 3.1 GHz to 10.6 GHz and uh, must operate at a low enough power level to ensure that it will not interfere with other systems in the existing communications frequency band. Due to its high signal resolution, it has very strong multi-pulse performance, penetration capability, anti-jamming capability, and a very high precision ranging performance. 
considering to the cost and the power consumption, UWB is gradually gaining recognition as an important solution option for high precision indoor positioning. Now, there are four algorithm models or calculation methods. TOF, the time of flight, is a two-way distance measurement using the signal transmission time in the tag anchor tag to calculate the distance between the tag and each anchor. This requires both tag and anchor to have the ability to send and receive signals. TDOA, time difference of arrival. This method is to measure the difference of a flight time from tag to two anchors. Then the distance difference between tag and the two anchors could be calculated. Angle of arrival, AOA, is to use a single anchor with an integrated area antenna to calculate the position of the tag when the incident angle of the signal could be measured. This method is usually adopted in BLE solutions. Angle of departure is a method in contrast to the AOA approach. The integrated area antenna at the tag, which measures the angle of incidence of the signal by accepting the base signal, can be calculated directly at the terminal. So, according to different application scenarios and the terminal requirements, system integrators could easily choose the one that fits the application most to adopt the UWB technology. This page shows a typical topology of a TDOA-based indoor positioning system. The terminal or rover called tag will send impulse to the basis, which is called anchors. Then the anchors will forward the information to an engine to calculate the high precision location using integrated algorithm. The application then will get the exact coordinates forwarded by the engine to perform a series of customized functionalities. For example, geofence, uh, tag tracking, uh, SOS checking, trajectory replay, etc. In this structure, the anchors must have very precise time synchronization between each other. Accurate coordinates of the anchors should also be collected as a calibration to the positioning area. The table here allow us to briefly compare the indoor positioning technologies. In indoor areas where people usually work due to the large amount of uncertainty and the various types of electromagnetic interference, the advantages of UWB technology are very obvious. The only problem at the moment is maybe a complete system is still slightly expensive. As to other technologies, for example, infrared, ultrasound, Wi-Fi, and Bluetooth all have different disadvantages. For example, although for BLE 5.1 protocol, it's introduced new capabilities, including the more accurate detention of the angle of arrival, but the effective distance is not long enough, and the, the receiving device is densely arranged. AOA coverage distance is also limited by the height of the installation of anchors. Solution providers of UWB are also constantly trying to reduce the cost to make this technology more accessible to their customers. Let's take a look at the areas or industries where this technology is already being used and what we can expect in the future.
The industries that have already adopted this technology today include power and energy, hospital and healthcare, manufacturing, warehousing and logistics, sport and training, judiciary and detention, indoor drone and AGV. The purpose of the systems are mainly used to the positioning of people, such as employee safety, patient and visitor tracking, detainee monitoring, player movement analyzing, social distance keeping, especially in this year's special period of COVID-19. The system could also be used to provide the positioning of materials such as asset managing, material tracking, route optimizing, and inventory managing. Besides positioning of vehicles, spare parts, and the navigation of automated equipment are also required, as well as to the navigation with VR or AR to develop further future applications. With the integration with other sensors, the functionalities of the system could be very rich to meet typical smart management system requirements. So, it is foreseeable that in the near future, more and more new smart mobile devices will integrate UWB technology and the standard communication protocols will be developed and made public, of course. To be fair, there is no such claim that UWB is a better technology than, for example, Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. Each technology has its market use, case, and for many of them. They can be combined to de deliver the best added value and a faster return of investment. Although at present the UWB is only being used for transfer files, photos, etc., but we have enough reason to believe that this technology will soon truly enter the consumer market and its scalability will be greatly enhanced. Imagine in the near future, a car key with UWB could also be a key to my house and could also be used to tag my mobile phone and my earbuds. I could also use it to access to my air conditioner and TV and other smart devices. I could also no longer be bothered to locate my car in a big parking lot. More services based on high precision indoor positioning, which are not yet fully explored, will be available for the smart city. And more importantly, there may be another major change in the way we live our lives. That is all I want to share today. Thank you for your attention, and I hope you all could enjoy a good Intergeo Digital 2020. Thank you.